For superfood, microgreen home cultivation, you're gonna need 10 things. Starts with number one, the seeds. Number two is gonna be the hemp. This happens to have been cut to a 10 inch piece that fits into the tray that is 20 inch long. You're gonna need a sprayer just for water, scissors to cut that hemp, and also to cut it at the end to harvest for refrigeration. A measuring device that would be either 10, which will be teaspoons of the seeds, or the equivalent, which is one quarter cup of the seeds. The trays include a tray that has holes. This is the one on the top. It sets in a tray that has no holes. And then the third tray is for covering it during germination so that they are in darkness for three days, typically then taking it off for day four and a week, so three plus germination and seven to grow. We then use the same scissors for cutting the hemp in the beginning as cutting it into sections so that it will fit in a container that will go in the refrigerator. And if you want it, there's a bonus for the stickers. So in sequence, number one, seeds, two, hemp, three, sprayer, four, scissors, five, measuring device, Six is the tray with the holes. Seven, tray without holes. Eight, tray without holes. Nine, containers. And 10, the stickers. 11 is just your tenacity, the bonus, to make sure that you stick with it and we're here to help along the way. For microgreen germination, it's very simple. Lower tray has no holes middle tray which has the mat has the holes to drain and this is wet so it's not soaking soaking wet like dripping dripping because you don't want too much water to catch in here and just get stagnant this gets set in the tray that has the holes um you know set inside the one that has no holes another one with no holes just sprayed wet and that goes upside down after the uh, seeds have been sowed i use a quarter cup dispenser from the seed mix and just sprinkle these around it goes very quickly and the idea here is to get them relatively even but the reason you don't want the um, the mat to be totally soaking wet like boggy wet is that you're gonna take your finger and sort of smooth out some of the areas where there's maybe too many seeds to get it evenly um, distributed so here we go, that's basically clearing out the, um, the quarter cup, which holds, by the way, one ounce for a, um, for a 10 by 20 inch tray. If it was, um, you know, a smaller tray that's like half this size, eighth of a cup, you would have half of an ounce. I'm gonna show you them from the spraying standpoint. I use a sprayer like one of these guys, just has a head. And then I get these nice and moist. So after they've been basically evened out, I'm getting them wet. And what that does is that makes it easier for you when they're dry to set, spread them around. Otherwise, you get, um, you know, they, they glob up on your fingers and become kind of like clustered. And you're gonna spray every um, morning or evening whenever it's convenient for you for about three days and then put the cover back on each time and put them in a cool, dark place to, uh, to germinate. Sometimes if I see after spraying there are a couple really dense spots, you know, I might just try and spread them around a little bit, but you can see they get on your finger. So it's certainly much easier to do it when they're, um, when they're dry. That doesn't have to be totally accurate. What you're trying to do is just avoid sort of blank spots in the, uh, in the mix. Then we're gonna keep this wet. Remember, we're gonna spray the underside of this it helps to spray the underside of the um, germination tray each time you spray the seeds themselves. So it's basically gonna be the first spray, which is today. I happen to do it on Sundays, and then let it sit tomorrow, Monday morning. Since it's now Sunday morning, I'll spray it again, both the seeds and the upper side. Do that on Tuesday, 
and then check for Wednesday. Wednesday, sometimes I do final day of germination, and then I lift the, um, the cover on the, um, the third day and set them out on the windowsill or on a table near the window and let them grow for about a week. Well, here is the tray that was germinating starting on Sunday. So this is what the greens look like just after about two and a half days. And they typically get a spray every day. Now, depending on how either dry or humid it is, I could see spraying them potentially twice, you know, in a day, evening and, um, and morning as well. It's Wednesday morning. So this has been germinating for three days since Sunday morning. And this is what it looks like after a week, meaning Wednesday a week ago. We lift it as we're doing today, the cover off. Wow. So these are the microgreens that have been germinating, getting sprayed with the mister, you know, every morning and typically in the evenings. And photosynthesis, just by setting them out in the sun, over seven days turns them into superfood. Pretty incredible. On the first day, I typically like to put inside the, uh, the tray a half liter right off the start, and that way it's gonna be moist because there's just enough of the roots coming in that you wanna keep them hydrated for their first day. And then follow along each morning and evening to check it and add typically up to another half liter twice. No more than one full liter in a day. It's 4 p.m. in the afternoon, and here is what photosynthesis has done just in the last few hours. So it turned the yellow greens that were coming right out of germination into actual green greens. Pretty cool. It's Thursday afternoon, so these have been in the sunlight after germination since Wednesday morning, almost two days. What you're gonna see here is they start to uh, get the roots coming through. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, which is a half liter, and I'm gonna pour it in the edge right there. I just shifted the upper one across because I am going to be out of uh, town tonight. So that has just a little about half an inch of water. These are growing towards the sunlight. So what I like to do is rotate this thing all the way around. So what's gonna happen is they're gonna draw towards the light. And that way, when I come back, just in one thing, a single day, they'll be straight up and down or leaning a little bit towards the light and then keep rotating over the course of the week of the vegetation. For harvesting, you can either just pull up the microgreens and eat the whole thing. Little roots are, are really not a big deal. There's just typically that little piece, but the whole thing is edible. Or you can cut them with scissors right at the base and put them on a salad. What I've done with packaging is typically put them for the refrigerator, still held in the roots into the system. So for example here, if you start to lift this up, you can cut along the center line just using shears, like sort of heavy duty scissors. And you can cut what basically is a square piece, so then this is going to go just as a pad inside of the container. It fit right in there, and then what we do is we just tuck the edges in from the sides. And this can be given as a um, gift to a friend. It can be refrigerated for your own, you know, eating. It'll last at least a week, sometimes even ten days in the fridge, and sometimes local restaurants, or in the case today, these are going to be delivered to what is called um, the Juice Pod, which is like a health food um, place that has um, avocado toast, where they put the superfood microgreens on the, uh, on the toast. So there is the container that seals, and this container then has the hemp at the bottom, so they're staying like literally alive. It's pretty interesting because most microgreens are delivered clipped. Well, the advantage here is that as the restaurant or you personally or your friends want to eat them, you can just pop the lid in and eat them. This is also a compostable package, meaning it's made from cornstarch. Looks like plastic, but it has the, uh, the run there. And what I've done with labeling is typically put on, you know, a label at the top 
and this is something where it says um, superfood, and then it tells you who the um, prepared by the uh, or the grower is and prepared on, which is packaging. So that this goes right on the um, the top of the uh, the label. If I just pull this one off. These are, by the way, it's just an Avery product. It's not something that's really too special, like from a Staples. But the idea then is that that label goes on the top, and I want to make sure that this one lines up nicely on that top center spot. Boom, boom. And that tells you then that is it is um, grown by, I'll write my name in there and the date of today, and it tells you that it's got the turnip, the radish, the collard, the broccoli, and the purple kohlrabi. So we've gone from seeds with the germination to the harvest and to the packaging. Pretty cool. Signed and sealed, today's date, October 26th.